Just wanted to film this place, look. Hello, welcome to another week at Brampleby Farm. So, don't know really what's going on. We're still working a bit of tidy up this week, I think. We've got a fair bit and we've got our party at the end of the week. I'll try and do a little couple of clips. But I'm just walking this, look. I had the calves in here. Then we rotationally, well, we didn't rotationally, then we put the bullocks on here for a week. So they sort of didn't eat it all. But um, I just want to show you how good it's looking. So where you sort of trample some, leave some, but nice thick board in the bottom there. This is going to, looks messy. That's probably the um, thing that, Plenty of moisture, it's soft down there. Can't really just pick a bit out. The soil is. I know we've had a lot of rain, so it will be soft, but places where it's a bit bare, it's not so soft. I think strong winds and 20 odd degree of sunshine. But I'm sort of tempted to come in with a topper and do something with these. Thistles and I don't quite know what to do with them really. So I don't want to spray them. They might come through and top them. It's going to take out a lot of everything else that's here. So you've got the dung. Don't worry, I'm not making your sausages when I get back. See if there's anything going on there. There's some holes in it. See much activity, which is a shame. The grass is grabbing hold of that and it's been broken into the grass. So, yeah, so this is probably what we're aiming for. Walk the cows across and leave this sort of residue behind, and then you want this new grass, as you can see. Starts putting a tip on and repairing itself, which is good. You can see the older grass has been broken off, but then if you grab handfuls, all this dead stuff has been trampled into the floor. And the moss is getting less as well, because it's quite mossy, this field. So I say what we should be doing with this correct rotational grazing. So if we should be eating a third, trampling a third and leaving a third so probably think we've done that here <clears throat> so yeah very very happy so we can get this across the whole farm which is a long-term plan then we'll be uh more than happy and this gets another this has had two weeks with nothing on it so that's 14 days tonight um It just gets another seven. That'd be the minimum break it gaps. You can't hear that, but I can hear a turtle dove. It's the third turtle dove I've heard today on two different places on the farm, which is good. But just look here, that 14 days of recovery time. A little dip on that, and I haven't eaten it. You can see here that. That's the top, so if I break that off, Bring that off reasonably close to the ground, so that's a good six inches, and that's just starting to repair on the top. So, which means it'll be so. What we'll get by grazing this way, this plant recovers quicker, it will take more carbon out of the atmosphere. So just look, look at all that for dead matter. All this dead matter will get trampled in, that'll produce organic matter within the soil. That will allow us once that starts working out over a few years that allows us to hold more moisture and to absorb rain when it actually happens rather than getting run off so that'll be much better which will grow more and by not eating it all the way down you get a healthier plant and getting a healthier plant means it will take in more carbon from the atmosphere and a grass field grown correctly will take in the next 20 years more carbon than the newly planted woodland because the woodland will take that yard long so not a bit of rag work 
So the um, best way for carbon catching, sequestering or whatever they call it, I can't say that word, um, is this type of grazing. So, and if you graze it too short, what then the plant will have to do, the plant will have to break off or kill off some of its own roots, produce enough carbon and energy within its rhizosphere of its root zone to grub again. So doing it this way, it's a lot quicker. We don't really want that sun there. I'll carry on walking this way. It's a lot quicker for the grass to recover. Therefore, we'll grow more grass with no inputs quicker than if we was to cut it or graze it or continuously graze it. So we're moving our cows all the time. Um, we should hopefully, over the next few years, a bit of rag work, do three times the amount of grass of what we have been doing without, without inputs. So I'm not talking about those who, who put high inputs on and high yielding grass species. So I'm talking about the, the zero input or low input grass management. So um, obviously if you're going to put fertiliser on by the bucket load and high yield and tallium rise, it's going to be a lot, a lot higher yielding, but this should or hopefully will compete with that type of farming and without putting fertilizers or harmful things into the environment and catching more water and holding more carbon so and tasty beef as you all know <laughs> yeah which you can order on our online shop which you all know as well so now we started opening probably one day one morning one afternoon a week we're going to start opening so people can actually come and we can cut the steaks at a width or whatever they want or our pork or whatever else it is they want so and that's how we are trying to convert all of our farm to this way of farming so next two years are going to be quite exciting for us and we have having to sacrifice probably nearly 30 acres where um we're over grazing as we perhaps normally would have grazed in the past few years ago so that we can allow fields like this to recover so hopefully we'll get another graze off of this shortly three or four a couple of weeks and then um this will get left for a for a winter graze but yeah thought i'll tell you that bit hope that was interesting for you let's see what else we're going to do this week if i get a chance to record anything quickly has been driven over by the tractor and that's killed it and we've noticed in a few places i've just stamped a few more out that where we do run these crown thistles over they don't seem to like it you break that stem up it does seem to wilt and kill them so maybe rolling could be a way forward and that'd be no different from cattle trampling the ground so that maybe is an option that we roll some patches we did try it on another field that's a roots on that we did try it on another field and um definitely where we we drove up and down a track and we just done our best to run them over and then um, that definitely made a difference and then we actually went and rolled an acre or so and they did survive but they're not as not flourishing there's another one there look you can see that we'd have driven over it they're not flourishing as much as where we didn't roll it so maybe who knows maybe rolling these because they are getting a bit over the top we'll ignore them this year but next year we're going to get loads of these little ones and the cows really don't want to eat them so yeah maybe we'll roll them up on there look it's been run over it hasn't liked it has it so just have a stamp on it yeah it wouldn't take long because you ain't got to roll the whole field have you? you can stay off of where you don't need to go just get them but look at the bees love them though they're a big bugger that there's loads if you look in here it's a little funny looking little fly is that a little horse fly oh, that looks like, that's a horse fly one of them the bees loving it so another bee probably you roll them now now they're opening up the flower, I do believe they still go to they still go to seed. It's amazing. But look, stinging nettle, right back by the cattle. 
them stinging nettles have been grazed back. Top of that's been grazed off or damaged. Maybe we've hit it with a stick when walking. So, but yeah, it's a little bit more messy than conventional farming, but we're enjoying it. And then just look at that. Zero input. Wheat, that's our own seed. That's ploughed, power harrowed and drilled. That's had nothing else on it. <laughs> that's pigs beforehand, so that's probably why. And we've got an elderberry bush. It'd be fun in the combine, wouldn't it? So, and that looks, to be honest, that looks about ready. I'll tell you one thing, we're not ready. That's still a little bit green in the bottom. Just get across and have a look. Oh. Up. Is that woodpecker? Not bad ears, are they? There they are, one of our late drilled spring crops. So we've got our peas in here, beans, wheat and barley, and canary grass. I uh, can't really see the canary grass, but I don't really know what the canary grass is. Looks like never grown it before. <coughs> so, not brilliant. Really disappointed. Went in so late, went in so dry. So, we've got patches like this that are going to come to nothing. But, majority of the field, there's a patch down, a patch down the bottom headlands. Looks like this. So, these beans are getting up. Zoom in this one here, it's like a sweet clover. I don't know if I'm right on that one or not. I didn't drill it, it's natural. <clears throat> so yeah, some of the beans are getting up, but remember also these will be injecting nitrogen back in the soil along with the peas. So it's starting to get a little bit of wispy head, so that'll start developing a, a seed head soon. So that's basically going to bulk out much more. And some that got in there a bit earlier so we drilled this field twice we drilled it early on with some that's nearly at the stage you'd see if we just squeeze it oh fell out why is it still there there you go look it's a bit like cheese so that would, if it, the whole field was like that, you'd be about a week away from cutting that to put it in a bale probably, but it's not. So that's mostly barley that went in there with a little bit of wheat. So peas and beans. So hopefully that'll either be good for us or Mark, if he has it back for trees next year. So, only one or two patches of thistles in the whole field, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the next field. Sorry, this might be what this video is about. A bit of crop walking. <coughs> We've got um, another one drilled the same, but we double drilled it on heavy land. This is real nice soft land here. And um, again, the bees everywhere. I think the bees bite out the back of the bean to be able to pollinate it. <coughs> so we're gonna have a look at the others. This barley here. So you just see it just a, a day or two ahead. No real seed. There's a lace wing. So we had somebody do some research on lace wings once on um on fruit growing, see it? It's gone, don't know where it went. Not as common as what they used to be, apparently. Struggling a little bit. So, nice to see one. And see another one. Yeah, not an exciting crop, I'm afraid. <coughs> Don't know if it'll cover the input cost. Cost of the seed, peas and the beans, and the cost of drilling it, because we had to get contractors in, and the land rent. It's got to bulk out a lot, lot more than that. <coughs> Which it still might, but I doubt it. Not now it's rushing to head, it's just not really sent up any leaf, it's just sent up what it needed to build itself a seed. 
so. A bit more weed pressure in this field, but a lot happier with that. These are down there, so they'll come. This is a lot taller, a lot more leaf. This is heavy land. So if it's been barren for a lot of years, but that must be the canary grass. I nearly guarantee that is. I've not seen that grass before. We've got pea coming up, but nice bit of height to it. Bean next to it. More peas down there, grabbing on. Nice bit of thickness in it. So this will yield. This will do okay. So be nice if it did better. But a lot of thistles. But, um, I'm not going to worry too much on them. Yeah, more happy with that. Headlands are a bit. Obviously, still got some compaction issues here. But you can see, looking down there, like all the little peas. The peas that plant there with the curly bits on the end of it. There's quite a few of them there. There's probably just as many out there that you can't see. So, in all, pleased with that one. The grass field was overgrazed. That's just just here. Look, that's nearly. Just tight, look. Push this too high, it gives that bloody bristly ox tongue in here. Look at all the butterflies, look. Won't grumble too much. What's this, Timothy? Talking about butterfly nearly hit me in the head. Then you get this bristly ox tongue, which is horrible stuff. But, I don't know. Butterflies seem to be doing well. Sort of everywhere I walk, look, lots of them. That's pretty good. Bit of clovers in the bottom, along with some buttercups though. So, seems about reverted from the Italian stuff. Some of this, perhaps, is the Italian. Getting some slightly different grasses in here now. This was just Italian rye. God, there it is, literally. That type of butterfly, I'm not a butterfly person. Everywhere. Here, we've got big swathe and acre of bristly ox tongue. So, not much of the yellow stuff, which is good. We dealt with some of that in here last year, but the bottom of the sward. So remember we give these some boughs, and that's what we were trying to achieve. This had no clover really in this field. And now look, and cattle have mucked out, right in that clover, look. Shin high, nearly knee high, thick, not everywhere. So in all, really good for butterflies. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine or ten I can see. It's thicker, the mare's tail is probably less. But here we've got the, we've got the vetch. And that's gone to about to go to seed. That sort of pops this stuff does, and the seed can pop out. But I don't know if you can see that. Not very um anyway, you can see it's about to go to seed. That's really hard to walk through. So that's gonna reseed really well. So even if the cattle eat that in the winter time, <coughs> that'll clear it up pretty good. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just butterfly, butterfly, butterfly. So a bit more Italian y type stuff here. So, in all, pretty the ox tongue. You're still a bloody nightmare. Clover's coming. Grass species are changing. Be nice to get in here. And the ragwort, we had quite a bit of ragwort in here last year. I've only seen about four pieces. And that ragwort all within that batch. That's the thick bottom. So this was overgrazed, as we just said. So, so Bristly Oxtar, I reckon if we come and graze this now, and we haven't got the cattle numbers to come here, I reckon if we graze this now, 
would probably do it really, really good. A bit more. About a fifth piece. <laughs> that flies. Surely you can see them on the 30 box. So I'll stop moving this in the cell. Um, I reckon if we graze this now quickly, I reckon the cows will eat most of this oxtail. Anyway, sort of is what it is. I missed you. Oh, no, I've got you. Look, got your root out. Yep, just going to have another look. Some more fields. Just wanted to film this piece. Look, it's getting level. That is, I would have said level about there. <laughs> no inputs. Brilliant. And there's lots of it. <coughs> More heavily grazed land. And just look at the bottom. It's got some height. It's five odd foot. But just look. The whole field. Little patch of ragwort. The whole field is like it. Just lush. Green grass and vetch, which I managed to move the vetch across. It's following the cows around, that is. <coughs> it's good, I'm glad we're getting that on the farm now. It's good for the insects. <coughs> look, look. Butterflies. <laughs> Should become a butterfly connoisseur. Just look at the bottom of this, though. Good eating in here when I come back, wouldn't they? Look. <coughs> you can see the trample plenty in in the winter time, but that's nice and thick. We're just trying to build up this type of thing in the bottom. It really could do with a graze now, but that might be after Christmas when we get here. <laughs> but please with that. We lost this field here, probably by a couple of hundred pounds. So it's been written out to some horsey people, so. But if you change your mind, we can match the money, maybe put a little bit on top, because we'd like it back. It'd be a handy field for us. And some of our spring barley that we'll combine. Second year, this is our barley on it, so we'll be on here again next year, we'll change it. Not a bad seed head. Would make perfect. Probably a perfect whole crop at the minute. And then there's a bit over there. That was later drilled. We'll see what that comes like. We'd like to combine it. We've got the straw rather than whole crop, but we'll see. So, quite happy really. So. Long and short of it, we graze in the winter time on some grass that we would normally have for hay and only seen benefits. The grass is no different, just as good. Um, what's that? What's your frog? Um, grass was no different, just as good. And um, if anything, it was better. So we'd move more clover in, more vetches in, so without spending any money because they were in the bowels that were took to the field. And we got 20 odd head of cattle out most of the winter that didn't quite all go on hay fields but did move around the hay fields so all our hay fields have been done and I think a lot less hassle and a lot easier than the whole crop so no tractor diesel no seed so I think we'll probably see how this winter goes and put a little bit more over to that and keep the whole crop be good for the young bullocks um we are thinking of putting the whole crop out in the round bowels in the field so and then when the young stuff goes through we open up a bowel and then they can just graze it in situ once it's all gone we move to the next graze and graze along like that it'll make the grass last a little bit longer and when we've actually put it out there there's no more tractor work so we can actually do that work in a month's time bring it back decide where we're going to put it put it in straight rows and if we're going to drill something we'll drill something around it and we'll try we'll try and um 
get it all sorted. So try and save some time, effort and work load this winter time so and produce you better and better beef every year. Right, getting on the road so poor old girl that boy turns 17 and he's pimping up my Land Rover. But didn't it look so nice the way it was look? And now look. Pimping up stuff everywhere, speakers, new socket set for him to lose. How long do you reckon they keep that for, Jack? Uh, about a week. About a week. He bought some lovely alloys with tyres that come without the tyres. Thank you, boy. Look, look at these, look. It'd be like sitting in a spaceship that don't move. <laughs> look, I don't even know I'm supposed to get in there. Yep, I suppose that's what 17 year olds do, isn't it, boy? You're happy, aren't you? It's got no back seats in either currently. No back seats? Mm -hmm. I not really got much of a front seat, look. Uh, got a storage yard in there, though. You want to spray it, but I wouldn't let him spray it. So, he's not going to change the steering wheel. That was the old dog ate that, wasn't it? But he's going to change the dashboard, are you? Yeah. Yeah, the dog ate that as well. You've got to send me the rest of my money tonight so I can order everything else I need. Yeah, and it's still about grand's worth of stuff I need. What? I don't, no, we're not talking in money. Yeah, still a pound's worth of stuff you need. Don't lose that bolt, you might need it. So, anyway, I welded the seat in there, so they're struggling to get the seat out. <laughs> it failed its MOT, so I thought I'd, um, yeah. There's why every year it breaks, and every year I weld it back up. So I don't think that one comes out, boy, but you might now be able to, some one of you hold the handle down, the other one go behind with a hammer and knock it forward. No, that's not. No, is that welded at the back as well? Yeah. Yeah. I know. When, I remember when I welded it, I caught it on fire as well, I had to rush and get some water. So, anyway, I'm going in for a cuppa. Good luck. Smile, Jack, you're on camera. Yeah. We've moved it. Yeah, I think you're getting in there now, boy. Oh, done some years sitting in that chair, boy. Still had a few miles left in it. No, it didn't. It did. On the back of it. I don't sit on the back, I sit on the front. Oh. They don't make things last anymore, do they? 17 years. It's not the original bottom now, I've had two or three bottoms. Yeah. I think the dog ate the bottom once. <laughs> but if you can hear that, old Skylark's going. But that's how you want to see your cattle in the morning. Just come down and give them a quick move. All happy and content, so perfect. Just um, thinking about what we do with these fields, the one behind us, which is inside the hedge there, and the one I'm now walking into, which we've just been grazing off, of what we ought to do to it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm thinking of buying two or three different things like rape and some turnips, and not like for the rape of cow, turnips maybe some phacelia and a few other bits and pieces and just do a bit of a mix, bit of wheat and just stick it in a fertiliser spreader. We have got one of them, we don't use it. And uh, spread it on and hope that with the um, <coughs> ground conditions being nice and wet, or if we can get that on later in the week, say Thursday, that might just do the job. So we will see. Yeah, you can see, don't really want to leave it like that all winter. So I'm not sure I really want to put wheat in. <coughs> so I think if that gives me something else to graze this winter, we, look at, we can look at then but the, whatever we want to grow next year, whether we want to grow spring barley or whether we just want to put another, <coughs> put it into multi-species wards or whatever. So play it by ear, there's no real plan. 
see how this winter goes. It'd be nice to have something that's quite bulky and winter hardy. So we will see. A lot of this mustard as well will come, so better add another <coughs> another bit of leaf to the to the mix. So quite happy with that. Anyway, let's get them moved. No idea what that is. Hmm. Maybe it's an oxide daisy or something, I don't know. <coughs> That's the problem. Wagwa. We've got lots of it. But look at all this nitrogen. And the trickery eventually has come. <coughs> it's raining at the minute, raining pretty hard, but I thought we were. This is the good, the bad and the ugly all rolled into one. We've got thistles. We've got ragwort. We've got red clover. We've got white clover. We've got... Look at these pea pods off of the... Um, <coughs> oh, what is that? Vetch. So, look, they're ready. So now... If the cow was to eat these... They would just come out somewhere else because it can't digest them in its stomach. Sheep could, the cows can't, so that'll just come out and land somewhere else. <coughs> There's loads of them in here, it's what we want. So we want them seeds and we want to be able to graze them seeds with the cows to move them around. Birds foot tree foil. So stuff in here I haven't got a clue. So weeds like bristly ox tongue. So there should be there's crimson clover in as well, which I have seen. Not so easy to tell which one's which, but none of them are crimsons. So loads of the birds for tree foil. <coughs> so you want that to go. Grasses, loads of pea pods. So, and all of these, so these red clovers, the vetch, the white clovers, the birds for tree foil, birds for tree foil, the yellow flower there, white clover, obviously the white. Red clover is in the red. Yeah, it's pink. Um, they all fix and build nitrogen and our proteins for the for the animals. And we've grazed this once this year. And we think when we grazed it, we've got nearly as much as what we got Italian ryegrass on its sort of fourth or fifth year. So the cost of drilling this was a, about a thousand pound in seed for this twenty acres. Um, <clears throat> so we've not recovered that money back so we're hoping now <coughs> a graze over this you can see areas so that bit there people asked that was power harrowed this bit was direct drilled and it's a bit more patchy so <coughs> a lot more patchy a lot more dead in the bottom if you see but it changes as and when you go across rainbow there for you as and when you go across the field so different patches you can see down there it's still scrolling for you if it will still bright bright green look so i think the drill played out i think they put too much on in some areas and not enough on in other areas but this is pretty poor so ideally when we graze this we want to graze it in conduct junction with the good bits and the bad bits all together <coughs> And here you've had a pass and that's about the width of our drill this is a joy when you have youngsters running it and i reckon they run the drill out along that side went up and down then all of a sudden they realized they run it out so they scraped it out and got another bit of a pass and then had to go and top up so here look i think they've run back down the field so we need to utilise this, so the plan was to let it go to seed, even though we're going to get the thistle, even though we're going to get the ragwort, even though we're going to get the bristly ox tongue, yep, but we're going to get the grass, the red clover, the vetch, the bird's foot tree foil, so, and all the other goodies that are in there, <coughs> and the cows are going to deposit across the rest of the field this winter, so next year, this field will look a bit better and then if we give a better management of grazing and graze it with stock destined for the beef market they ain't gonna hurt if i graze a little bit of the yellow ragwort and i'll say a little bit so we will have to 
try and do something with that. The whole field isn't like it. You've got whole patches here with just the odd plants, so we're going to have to be a bit careful because it will kill an animal over a long period of time. So it doesn't never leave the liver. So once it's in the liver, <coughs> it stays in the animals. There's a dragonfly there. Can you see it? It just landed. See it there? Sorry, just David Attenborough here. Just shows you what's out here. And, uh, it, and it is, my screen's wet, I'm getting wet. It's not heavy raining, but it's not nice. I don't think there won't be much flying why it's like this. So, yeah, so now we're in the worst of it. And um, if we go a bit further, we can be back in the best of it. I'm not walking all that way. I'm getting soaking wet legs and I left my tractor running. So, I've got a tractor over there. Six, six, and yes, a fertilizer spreader on the back. We dug out the stinging nettles. So what are we going to do with that? I thought you heard me say we don't use fertilizer on the farm. So, and we don't. So what are we doing with a fertilizer spreader on a tractor? And we're not putting fertilizer on anybody else's land. So we've got some mixes of bits. There'll be some clovers, there'll be radishes, cow. Um, I bought a bit of a, a dolly mixture of, of various bits and where the cattle are grazing at the minute and the next field they're about to graze um i know we probably won't graze that very heavy we won't have time because it's been so wet for the last week or so we're actually going to fertilize a spread on without fertilizer just the seeds and then we're going to use the cattle just to run backwards and forwards over it hopefully they'll give us a good enough ground to seed contact and um from that we'll uh, have some winter feed so the aim of that is it's quite cheap so this would have been a thousand pound that's probably 320 pounds for the equivalent sort of area <coughs> that should be reasonably quick growing and um, in return we should get some nice <coughs> quite fissily here but still plenty of stuff in the bottom so in return we should get a good few winters feed should be a little bit of protein in there so this is real look. <coughs> again you can see where the where the tractor was working better so um yeah give us some winter winter feed so this here this field we're in here would normally around about another week or so's time would normally cut and bale this for hay um and the plan is not to the plan is just to leave it um like we said graze it in situ move the seeds around so all these red clovers and everything else will just <coughs> be eaten mucked out somewhere else so we could do it with hay still but a lot of this stuff still got a lot of seed to produce and there's a bit down the bottom we're thinking about doing for hay and making some three foot bales and then all the fields that we're planning to graze in the winter time. That big horrible rook up on that wire, look. A carrion crow, sorry. And if you see one rook, it's probably a crow. And if you see lots of crows, they're more likely rooks. An old saying, so that's an old crow sitting up there. Um, <coughs> yeah, so we've put, put them around the farm so the seeds will stay in the bow. And then the cows will shit that out as they go. So anyway, let's go and see what we're doing with this. Look at them just taking the leaves off them thistles there. I've just moved them. <laughs> just five or six foot a bit of thistles up this side. I thought I'll get them to clear them thistles up. Here we are, and we've got the fertilizer spreader on, and we're putting on you know, this list here some rye grass, red clovers, white clovers, crimson clovers. Astrolite, bit of mudders, mustard, fodder radish, tillage radish, phacelia. I've got more fodder radish, got one bit more of that on there, and there's a bit of fodder rape. So, a bit of a mixture, so we're going to mix this lot up, and that's got to do that build there. So, we're going to put it straight into them daisies today, and then we are going to come back, graze the daisies off over the next six or seven days, and they'll trample this seed through. If that's still too thick, 
because it might be we'll just go and cut it with a hay mower and leave it on the floor or flour it off one or the other um, and then we've got where the cows are as well so that's my job that's what we're using the fertiliser spreader for that's it that's my job now drive up and down hope it's coming out Outside all, all, all year round or born outside, so um, and I agree that the silage and all that should be fed because it is still in a forage fall, and um, the cattle do need a little bit more to get them through some of the winters and just pouring old hay. 
but I suppose if you really want grass fed and you want probably pasture for life, you need to know that the, the cows have been on pasture yeah, for their life. But what does that mean? So you can put cows on a pasture, you can put 100 on 10 acres and leave them there all year round. And you can feed them fowls of hay. And therefore you've got grass fed, pasture for life cows. So is that really what you're looking for? So, or you can do what we're attempting to do to the best of our ability, and that's put cows out, rotationally graze, <coughs> and therefore you've got cattle out all year round on fresh ground as much as possible. And we don't manage it all the time, we just manage it most of the time. So that's proper grass there, beef, surely. That's got to be better than something in a pasture that don't get the move and something that's eating hay and you think it's grass there. So every year we strive to get better and better at it. But also hormones, we don't use hormones. So we don't use antibiotics unless an animal really, really needs it. We try not to use inoculations. We don't do much worming. If we're worried about worms, we can do a worm cow. But they seem to be moving all the time. They seem pretty worm free. We do a little bit of fly treatment if they need it. Um, we're trying to keep cows that perhaps don't need so much fly treatment, but that's not easy. Um, but again, what, what else do we do that's a little bit more than everybody else? So zero residue, which means we don't put any... So probably the most amount of residue we've got is these seeds in the back here. have probably been growing properly for this job. So they would have they would have received their their chemicals to keep it as a clean, healthy crop, and that's the best we can we can offer you. Really, we don't put any fertilizers on. And um, there's that hair again. Look, here we go, it's back again. How nice to see. Um, anyway, we do that the best we can. So. So are we above and beyond grasser and pasture for life? No. That's, that's your decision, not ours. This is how we farm. You buy our meat. We have to keep keeping more cows because you keep eating them. And, um, and that's how we farm. And through that we hope that you'll buy more and more beef as that keeps our farm going. So fingers crossed on that one that you like what we do. Also, with our grains that we do grow, we grow combinables. They, they themselves, again, don't, get, don't receive any any chemicals, and we now try and keep all of our own grains. We're even trying to grow things like bets this year, just an acre, to see if we can combine it so we can have some protein that we might be able to grind up to uh, add into the pig food. So, just always looking at new and different ideas of how to go forward. So the last little bit of the field here, but so I need to uh, stay in the middle of two lines I can't see. It's not because I'm blind, but even though I've got squinty on us, I can see a straight line pretty well. But anyway, I'll get to the end here and I'll get out and check and see what's left. Just stood next to it, see how far it's coming, but not enough's coming out really. It is coming a fair distance. A little bit slow, so I'm gonna open it up a little bit and go over it again. It's our third time across the field, going a different way this time. I'll show you how pretty Mother Nature makes a field if you need it. A bit more interesting, they've got a traffic jam. Yeah, how am I supposed to get through this lot? Okay, all I do is get the seed on in time, and everybody decides to go and build at the same time. Come on, move your asses! Come on! orange lights, that's must be what it needs to be. Think on emergency services. We only moved them a couple of hours ago, but they need to nip all that down. But ain't gonna hurt. It ain't easy to see. They ain't gonna look for it, but when he gets eaten, it'll just go straight through and back out the other end and stick it somewhere else on the field. Probably not straight the line to me. 
field is a bit rougher. Anyway, it's brilliant. So, quick pick of a straight line. What I do is I aim for the white cow. And I hope the cow don't move. They still cow. So, and then I use that as an excuse for it. So, that won't go straight. Cows in here somewhere, look. So it's the last bit. It's quite a biggish bit, but <clears throat> we're in a rush to move them, so we probably won't finish grazing this end. And I haven't put any seed on this end, so I'm quite happy just for a light munch. <clears throat> and then I'm moving them. We've got a party at the weekend, so me and my wife have been married 23 years on Saturday. And then my son will be 17 years old on Sunday, so he's pimping up the Land Rover. And then my daughter will be 26 on Monday. So, and the weather forecast is terrible. And we've, we've got a Ooze Valley Singles Club, which is a band, one of our local sort of groups of the Fem people. They're coming to play. Can you hear that turtle dove? I think it's too faint for you lot in here. Um, sorry, I'll stick you under my chin. So I'm just walking the outside of this fence, make sure this fence is cow proof till tomorrow. I must be sweating, it's gone a bit out there. Um, not overly happy, a bit low in this corner. So. I think I'll bring back two electric fence posts for them and now <coughs> just lift the corners up a little bit. So I'll step over that, but that ain't even that ain't even up to my knee. So just where it drops off a little bit. They're happy, aren't they? They'll go around and they'll get all these oats. Nip all the oat tops, look. Wouldn't you? So tomorrow I've got to do a wedding for Gainer in the afternoon. Gainer runs our um Water Beach Markets, so hope you have a great day again up and uh, we'll be there with a giant pig for you in the afternoon. So I've got a fence this next build that we just put the seed on in the morning, move this lot down there on my Jack Jones, get back and get out on the van, cook for a wedding, come home, open the shop Saturday morning for a few hours cut whatever grass needs cutting, have a bit of a tidy up and um, have a party a big one and I think it's going to rain so we'll have a wet party <laughs> so we won't let the rain dampen our spirits so we'll enjoy it so I'll see if I get a couple of little quick videos for you I don't really want to intrude on our personal life but it is a big one with the boy turning 17 so we splashed out a little bit and got them got them the band and you know have his mates there and we're our family and friends there be a good day anyway let's get these corners up so what we do here because that post has been put metal post in the corners that post has been put in where it's a bit dropped down so it'd be tall enough there so we just put a oh, ground's a little bit oh. And then that will just lift that up into there. Let's pull it up the waist height. We'll do it about here as well. <clears throat> I think we'll step over there because a bit of a hole. Typical, you see the field's been ploughed regular. It always lose the corners. Let's pull that back up to nice height. Pick up that strip line fence. Just a post left to pick up. And we go. When you're gonna carve the, hey? Pretty, come on, want some more milk? Milk sales are going well. One of the pigs we cooked for the wedding, but we don't do carved. That just falls apart. How many of you can carve a pig or a set of barbecue tongs? Good. 
going well thank you everybody for buying it so got a little bit of a we missed water beach last week because of the weather so we saved a little bit for that but i'm sure we'll drink water beach milk tomorrow on saturday at the party so but otherwise you're nearly keeping up with what we're producing and the orders are coming return orders and more people buying so it's all pretty positive so thank you for that anyway We'll go home, have a bath, sort the milk, go out delivery van. We are all go. Flat out, flat out, flat out. 